Professional development is important, but I would have to tell you we've got to change what it means. You know, 20 years ago, PD meant going to a conference and listening to speakers and going back home and continuing to do the same thing we'd always done. Uh, professional development today is dramatically different. Uh, and I would argue that the people who are watching play a significantly greater role in professional development than I do because the success of professional development is about what teachers and leaders do. So the best that anybody in my position as a writer or as a speaker can do is to instigate action. But it's, it is the action itself. It's what we do with students. That constant cycle of professional learning that happens in schools, not on stage, not on conventions. It's what happens in schools where professional learning really takes place. The most important issues facing educators in the years ahead is a new definition of accountability. For the last 10 years, accountability has been equated to nothing except test scores. And what I see emerging, not only in the U.S., but internationally, is that we will not have the level of student success that we need for economic progress and, for that matter, for a stable democracy if all we do is crow about our latest gain in test scores. A measurement is a piece, but only a piece of the puzzle. And the real challenges ahead are what are we going to do in leadership and policy and teaching that doesn't always get measured? What are we going to do in terms of classroom interaction that doesn't always have affirmation from a governmental authority? If we believe, for example, in service, if we believe in music, if we believe in art, if we believe in student engagement, those are all things that make schools what they are, but won't always show up in an accountability report. The decision to do those things anyway is what will make the next 10 years different from the last. The, the key takeaway is we must improve teaching and leadership because it's the right thing to do, not because any governmental entity is telling us to. It's just not intellectually consistent for us to say that we've got to wait for a government to tell us to be good teachers and good leaders and then at the same time resent their intrusion. The moral imperative to do the right thing, that's the only thing we've got left. When the money's gone, when the time is gone, when the federal authority is gone, we just have to do the right thing because it's the right thing, not because we were told to. When, when, when you're lucky enough to, to write and speak, it, it's easy to believe your own press. And, and, and trust me, I'm, I'm grateful for the fact that people read books and are willing to listen to what I have to say. Uh, but when they say this changed my life, I really know that they changed their life. That they're the ones who did the work and they're the ones who, who really uh, carried out those ideas. It's, it's, it's not me. But I'll tell you the moment I remember as a teacher. And it's when I had my own son, who's raised in a two-teacher household, um, listen to this girl in class make this astoundingly effective presentation. And he looked at me with wide eyes saying, well, I could never do that. What he didn't know was that, that girl, three years earlier, had been a second language student, had never spoken above a whisper in class. And it was my privilege to be a teacher that brought her from somebody who not only was speaking in more than a whisper, but speaking authoritatively, to the point that my own son was intimidated by her presentation, that was a great moment.